Good morning. You may realize that Pastor Erler is not here. He did not convert to Catholicism while in Rome. They made it back safely, and then they all got sick. <laughs> um, so they got back Thursday night, and by Friday, two of them were sick. And by yesterday, Pastor um, and them were sick. So. Uh, we quickly converted to a lay-led service. I have pastor's sermon complete with anecdotes about Erica and him. And so it, it'll sound funny coming from me, but uh, you'll get the idea if you put pastor in the place of I there. Um, but we will have a lay-led service this morning, so there will not be communion since we are lay-led. The elders will be leading you this morning um, on this Father's Day. Um, I will also, for those of you watching at home, I will not be able to be running the camera and be up here, um, which brings me to my first announcement. Live stream operators needed. <laughs> uh, Christopher and I are pretty much the only ones that are trained to run the cameras during the service and you know, days like today, it would be nice if we had a couple more people who could sit over here um, and play like on the old Atari joystick because um, you can run the cameras from over there and run the live stream um, from over there. So if you're interested, uh, talk to me. I can train you up on how to do it. Um, it's pretty easy once you know and, and we have it very, uh, set up to be automatic on a lot of stuff. So, um, The Chosen is now finally able to be viewed outside the church again, the fourth season. Um, so we are back to doing season two at Pastor's House. Unlike the schedule, though, it won't be this Tuesday. It'll be the week from Tuesday, which gives us ten more days to disinfect the Erler household before we go there. Um, so it will be, as it says on the front, on the 25th at Pastor's House again, and we'll be back to doing this, you know, where we left off in season two um, before we started on the season four because it was only available at church. Um, it's in the calendar, it shows that for this week it's the chosen. That's not true. Okay. It's next to a week from Tuesday that we'll be back on that. Um, summer reading, this is week three. Make sure you're, re you're reading your Bible and recording your chapters back there. Um, my team, team one, is giving you all a great head start. And we're up by 100 more today. So we're coming. You, you better be in your, in your reading and recording those readings because Team One's going to dominate here at the end. Um, but make sure you're staying in the Word this summer and recording your chapters uh, accordingly. Um, as you can see, the sanctuary this week turned into a coral reef, and our uh, youngsters did their VBS this week. Um, I was not able to volunteer. I want to thank Anna, who stepped in to my spot and led the Bible study each day. Awesome job, thank you. And, and her mom pinch hit for her one of the days. Um, so thank you all who volunteered. Thank all of you children who uh, did that. When I'm done with announcements, you are all going to regale us with some of the stuff you sang this week. Um, but I do want to say happy birthday to Judy Crabb. She is our one birthday this week. Tuesday, is it Tuesday, 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 any big plans? Okay. So Judy's birthday is this week, and that's the only birthday or anniversary in our bulletin. So with that, um, we will again have our, our young folks from VVS come up and uh, give us a little taste of what they had the last five days here every night.
Congregation will please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, o Lord, who could stand? but with you there is forgiveness. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. You may be seated for the next him resurrecting.
we continue with the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar, and under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest, and all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I will bring low the high tree and make high the low tree, dry up the green tree and make, dry the, tree, and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And your praise is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate. And I will declare your greatness. The epistle reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5. We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed... We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we were still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, clothed so that what is mortal may not be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are not at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seeds on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed.
seated. Again, Pastor usually works about six to eight weeks ahead on his sermons, and so we already have a sermon for today prepared by Pastor Erler that I'm going to read to you. Just keep in mind there are some personal anecdotes in here about him and Erica. That's not me when I say I and Erica. Um, he's using personal anecdotes. But the biblical basis for his sermon this morning uh, comes from the epistle uh, reading that Mark read for us, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. And the title of today's sermon is Good, Better, Best. Today we are going to talk about the idea of good, better, best. For example, a hamburger is good. A cheeseburger is better a bacon cheeseburger is best, right? Or, you know, I'm throwing this one in, 150 bold game, good. A 199, better. But what's best? A 300 game, right? So you can use a bowling analogy. But when Pastor Googled this, the top thing on the page that referred to something is known as Goldilocks pricing, 
which is a type of pricing strategy, a form of tiered pricing in which variations of a product are offered at multiple prices. Good is the low price. Better is the middle price. Best costs the most. We see this everywhere, right? TVs, cars, shoes, flooring. Because we're installing a floor in Tristan's old room. All right. I don't think I have to explain how Goldilocks plays into that. But anyway, good, better, best. And to hold that thought, we're going to come back to that. Trust me. When we turn to the epistle reading for today, near the end of the reading, the Apostle Paul simply says, We are always of good courage as we walk by faith, not by sight. We are courageous. We are confident. Well, we should be. Yet things happen when that confidence can be shaken. We can struggle with doubts and fears. That's when courage becomes more like discourage because of what we see or hear or feel. Let me give you some examples. Uh, and these are personal again to uh, Pastor Erler. When I see what is going on in our culture and what is going on around the world, I can get discouraged. I assume that is true for many of you. When someone calls me and I hear them saying that they are mad at me and they are leaving this church or congregation because of something I did or something they perceived that I did, even though we have worked and lived together in our congregation happily for many years, I find that discouraging. When something happens where I go from feeling good to not feeling good, like when I got my detached retina and had to have surgery and then couldn't sleep in a bed for two months, or when I hurt my hip and now I can't run as far or as fast as I used to. I don't think he ever ran that fast. Um, <laughs> or when a couple of weeks before our trip, I got Erica's head cold. So when I go from feeling good to not feeling good, that can be discouraging. I figure you know this too. When things go bad or wrong, we often deal with discouragement, fear, doubt, and our confidence gets shaken. The Apostle Paul knows all about this. He says, we groan being burdened in verse 4. Paul knows that our bodies will groan. At the beginning of this passage, he compares our bodies to tents, the tent that is our earthly home, for in this tent we groan. As a tent maker, Paul would know what happens to tents. They're not permanent or strong structures, unless a marine builds them. Um, but winds can come and blow them away if they stay up too long, the material starts to deteriorate and they wear out. Our bodies are a lot like tents. Some examples. A few years ago, COVID-19 hit. Now, we may not have been able to see that tiny little virus with our eyes, but we could see what it did. Over a million people died in our country. There are still people dying from it. And there are those who suffer from long covid Fear and doubt can rise up when we hear that word, COVID. Our bodies are like tents. Bad stuff happens. I met a young lady, pastor did, when he was in high school. They did not date. They were just friends. They did competitive public speaking and student government together. His words, they were nerds. But she was smart, sweet, and he did not know anyone who did not like her. She was talented, and the sky was the limit for her and her adult life. But she was in a car, driving home for Thanksgiving break as a college freshman, and the car she was in crossed the center line, was struck by a truck, and she was killed. Bad stuff happens. Maybe you know someone who died of cancer. We probably all do. Maybe you know of someone who had a heart attack or died of heart disease or Parkinson's or some other disease of the body. 
Or you can be in a grocery store, a Walmart, a movie theater, a school, a bank, at a concert, or as yesterday, at a splash pad, and gunshots ring out. But it doesn't have to be one of these deadly diseases or tragedies. For many of us, our bodies just wear out. You get older. I'm 62. No, I'm not. Pastor is. I don't have the same amount of stamina. I get tired in the evenings. The reflexes are slower. Exercise. Each weekday I am here, I walk down to the preschool and I say hi to the kids. Once in a while a teacher tells me one of the kids won't take a nap. Whenever I hear that I think, I would. Bad stuff happens. Things go wrong. The body wears down. It grows old. It dies. With sight and sound and touch, our senses are diminishing. And all that's going on with our bodies, these tents. How can Paul say we are always of good courage? How can we always be confident and walk by faith? Well, Paul certainly knew what happens to the body. Earlier in 2 Corinthians, he wrote about a brush with death that shook him to his very core. He had also been persecuted, run out of town and thrown in jail, and he had faced death numerous times. His body was growing old. I'm sure he had hoped that Jesus would come back before he died, but now he's beginning to realize that probably won't happen. He knows that he is soon to die. With that in mind, Paul gives the Corinthians, he gives us, and perhaps even gives himself a better word and a best word that gives courage. We are of good courage as we walk by faith because of the better and the best that are yet to come. The better word is that when we die, we will be with Jesus. Paul writes, yes, we are of good courage and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord in verse 8. But then a time will come that's the best time of all because there will be a resurrection of the body. In other words, it's good to be in our bodies now to serve the Lord. It will be better to be with him after we die while we are waiting for him to come back. That in between time is a time when our souls are with Jesus. It's a time of peace and rest for our souls. But the body is still here in a grave or as ashes in an urn or decaying somewhere else. So during that in between time, our souls rest with Jesus as our bodies return to the dust of the earth. That is the better. Paul says, than we, what we experience in this life. But what is best is yet to come on the final day of resurrection when Jesus leads us to live in the new heaven and the new earth and we physically live with Jesus forever. Good, better, best. A very gifted author by the name of Chad Bird writes for an organization called 1517, one of his recent pieces had a title that caught pastor's attention. It said, I can't wait to get out of heaven. What he was getting at is that we've become sloppy in our language about what, it, what happens when we die. Too often we just talk about going to heaven when we die, and that's about it. That's all we're hoping for. Now, Going to be with Jesus will be wonderful. But Bird reminds us that's not our Christian hope in its entirety. That's not the eternal life we are ultimately looking for. He gives this example. Suppose you have a house that's been built to your exact specifications. It's by a nice pond, fully stocked, John. 
In a beautiful setting, it has all the creature comforts, everything you ever wanted in a home, and it's ready for you to move right in. But it's a two-day drive to get there. So you spend the first night in a hotel. This hotel is outside Rocky Mountain National Park with all the grand mountain landscapes to enjoy. The room is comfortable with a very nice bed. Everything's being taken care of for you. But when you wake up the next morning, you're not going to stay in the hotel. You're going to turn in the key. You're going to get back in the car and start driving because you know the best home is waiting for you. He says that in between time, like a motel room, can be wonderful, but the best is yet to come. Because on the last day, the day when Jesus returns, all of creation will be renewed and restored. We will rise with our bodies glorified. There will be no more groaning, no more pain, no more death, no more disintegration, no more decay. Our eyes will see colors more vivid than any rainbow. Our taste buds will explode with flavors of foods that we cannot even imagine now. The smells will be aromas you want to breathe in deep and long, like beef in a smoker or bacon frying. We will touch stuff with nerve endings that are alive once again, perhaps touching the face of someone you haven't seen for a while. And we will hear music lifting us up to the greatest heights. We are waiting for that day when Jesus returns to make everything new once again. We walk in faith, believing all this best is yet to come, will arrive one day, because Jesus has already been resurrected in his body. Easter was just a few weeks ago. During the Easter season, we heard about Jesus risen from the dead with his glorified body. In Matthew's gospel, we hear about Mary running into Jesus outside the tomb. He speaks her name, Mary, and she grabs hold of his legs. He sees the disciples in an upper room and he eats a piece of fish to show them that he is not a ghost from Luke. He can let Thomas touch his hands and his side and they say, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed from John chapter 20. He eats breakfast on the beach with his disciples. Jesus has risen from the dead with his body glorified. And because he has, we too will one day rise. That resurrected body will be our permanent home. It will be the immortality we put on instead of this body. Instead of a groaning body, we will live in eternity with Jesus. Time to wrap this up. Remember, way back at the beginning of this sermon when I talked about good, better, best. Remember the example of the burger. Well, here's a better one as I have discussed with you today. It's good to walk by faith in this life, to be of good courage, to do what is pleasing to the Lord. It is better when this thing dies and we go to be with Him. But what is best is when Jesus returns and we will be resurrected. I promise you, that will be the best. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right. Danny, offering.
Heavenly Father, please bless and receive these gifts which we give back to you from that which you have first given to us. Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Most High, we give thanks to you that you have planted your holy word among us. Give healthy growth to your church that she may weather the storm, winds of this world, steadfast in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your Holy Spirit plants your word and causes it to sprout and grow as it pleases you. Bless the preaching and teaching of your word, that your kingdom may be extended, and give us thankful hearts to marvel at your work. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we are bold to ask for all things because you have given us your spirit as a guarantee. Hear us as we intercede in Jesus' name for those in every need we pray especially this morning for the early family as they, or early family as they recover from their illness. We pray also for Aubrey Titler um, as she is back home from the hospital this morning, um, that you continue to provide healing and comfort to her. And we pray especially for those families impacted by the shooting in Michigan yesterday. And we take a moment now to pray in our hearts for those uh, especially in need of our prayers personally. Lord, in your mercy. God of all mercy, through the abundance of your steadfast love, you gather us into your house and to your supper. Give all who commune faith in your promises that we would receive Jesus Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood is named, We give you thanks for earthly fathers. Give them confidence in their station and zeal for their task to care for their families faithfully. Make them examples to their children of godly life and love of your word. Bless their work of uh, bringing up children in the fear and instruction of the Lord and give them the comfort of your absolution over all their shortcomings. Gather us together with all our fathers to your eternal household, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We remain standing for our closing song today. All the people said amen. So hopefully Pastor will be here in the flesh next week rather than virtually, um, but uh, have a great week and we will see you all. Ne- uh, if you're a Tuesday morning Bible study right now, that's still on, but we will let you know if it's not going to happen. And thank you little ones for that wonderful singing. <laughs>